What is going on today? We're back with a brand new AEW 2-in-1 action figure review on the AEW Unrivaled Series 16 Jeff and Matt Hardy Boys. We have the Hardy Boys, man. We have the Hardy Boys back here today, and they finally arrived in Unrivaled 16. I remember when we saw the render shot for this Jeff Hardy head sculpt over here, and that seems like forever ago. That had to be almost two years ago now, but it's finally here in the review station. We're going to take you through it today. Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, possibly my favorite tag team of all time. Jeff Hardy, one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, so I'm excited here today, man. We have some really cool gear, some really cool figures going on. We're going to take them out see how they compare to the rest of our Hardys, see what the scale is, see what all the different details are, find out what these guys are all about. If you guys want to grab these, can't go over to Ringside Collectibles, use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but today, man, we do have Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy. I really, really dig the gear right here. Everybody knows that usually for Mattel and WWE, anytime we got Jeff Hardy, it was always on the Dean Ambrose torso and stuff, and it would pretty much be any long sleeve gear that we had like that. It was pretty much just paint decoed over a tank top mold, and everybody used to hate it. So now we have this that looks to be seamless. I'm excited for it, man. Looks to be great, but you have a nice shot of Jeff on the side right there. Nice shot of Jeff there. You have his name in Unrivaled on the side there, and then you do have a nice blurry ass image of Jeff on the back right there. Very cool face paint, though. Jeff Hardy. Rest of the figures in the way. Pretty cool wave, though. I think this is a really strong wave. Lots of stuff going on there, but then we also have Matt Hardy, which looks really good as well. I think this figure is pretty underrated. I think the head sculpts look pretty solid. We're going to find that all out. He's got his black look in there. Reminds me of really old school Hardy Boys mixed with a modern theme, which is pretty cool, but you have Matt Hardy there. Matt Hardy on the side. AEW logos. You have Matt Hardy on the back right there, man. But that is pretty much our Hardy Boy packaging. I can't wait to unbox these guys. I think they're going to be fun, man. I'm really excited for it. I really liked Jeff's first figure, and Matt's figure was pretty good, except for scaling issues. But let's see how these compare, man. Let's unbox AEW Unrivaled 16 Hardy Boys, find out what they're all about, and see how they fit into our action figure collections. So here's our Unrivaled 16 Hardy Boys out of the packaging, and I really am fond of these figures so far. I do have my gripes about them, things I like, things I don't like, of course. We're going to dive into it, man. But being a big Hardy Boy fan, growing up a massive Hardy Boys fan, and just being obsessed with these guys as I grew up, I am really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. And some things that I can tell about these figures is, so far, so good. So we'll have to see exactly how it progresses as we get into things. But we're going to start off with the accessories you get with the Hardy Boys, and then we'll dive into the figures themselves. And since they don't really come with a ton of stuff, we'll just put their accessories together in one segment and then we'll digress each figure individually. So getting into the Hardy Boys accessories man you do get pretty much the exact same deals here. You're getting an interchangeable head sculpt with each guy and you're getting two pairs of interchangeable hands. Now I'm not gonna lie it kind of feels like it was Hell's Gate time when we saw the render images of this figure right here and we did get the straight face and then we got the screaming expression of this face paint and I really really dig the face paint here and I like the likeness a lot on these head sculpts. I think they did a phenomenal job on the paint apps on everything on these. The sculpt looks good. The gauges look good. I really like both of these head sculpts. I think they turned out pretty phenomenal for the most part. I think the likenesses are there, the just the details. I really enjoy these head sculpts overall. I think they're pretty solid. Overall, just really good stuff, and I enjoy Jeff Hardy and his face paint, so this is awesome to see in figure form. Very toyetic. I know it's black and gray and white, and you have a little bit of red or orangish accents on the side, which isn't the most exciting gear, but damn, it's a good face paint. I like this. Kind of gives me kiss vibes or something. And on the other side, you have Matt Hardy, and I, I like these head sculpts, man. I don't think they're bad whatsoever. I think they have a lot of likeness. I really like the straight face. I think I like the straight face better than the screaming expression. Something about it also kind of gives me like Pock or Neville vibes. But I really like this. This one in particular has a lot of Matt Hardy in it for me. And I think it really captures him, especially in his older age. I think that they did a really good job overall here. And I thought that his last head sculpt was pretty good. It was just oversized in his body and formula, which we'll get into. We're going to do comparisons, of course. But I like these Matt Hardy head sculpts a lot, actually. I think they're very fun. And they'll probably be a bit too big to put on a Mattel figure. But I don't know, man. These are great. And uh, the saying Matt Hardy and Mattel and like Jeff Hardy Mattel. I really want to see like Ultimate Edition Hardy figures and like a big TLC set or something in the future. So I imagine one day they will go back. They're absolutely going to go back. But at this moment, I'm enjoying what we're seeing right here in this AEW, you know, Jazzwares era that we're in. And then for interchangeable hands, we do get these signature Hardy Boys hands. And each guy does come with a pair of these and then a pair of kind of gripping or mic holding style hands. And you do get the tattoos of the roots coming down on Jeff's hand. And I don't, I like that we have signature hands. I just don't like the pose. They're kind of like bent a little bit and it kind of looks, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't, there's something about signature hands that AEW and Jazzwares does where they're a little too small and I also feel like the shape of them isn't fully correct even if this is the exact pose that Jeff and Matt were making when they sculpted them or when they scanned them. There's something about it that I just don't think looks aesthetically right but I do like the black and white sleeve layering and I love the tattoos on there so that is good but I want to say that both of the, his hands are tattooed but I could be wrong there. And then again here is Matt Hardy so you do get the same one there. You don't get like the V1 hands or anything 
anything, you are only getting the, you know, the Hardy Boy signature or the two finger salute style deal. And then for Mike holding hands here, the same deal. It's the same patterns, the same tattoos and everything, which look really good. I think they did a good job on the Mike holding hands too. And then for Matt Hardy, it's the same deal. It's just plain black, no tattoos or nothing like that. So starting off with Jeff Hardy, man, at the top of the head sculpt, it does look a bit odd at certain angles, but I still like the head sculpt a lot. I, I don't know what it is about the space paint that I really like. It gives me willow vibes or something. I just like it a lot. And you get a lot of details here because you can see the tattoos do go on the neck right there, which I like. And he is on a ball hinge, and we'll get into the different articulation here in a moment. But I really like the sleeves on this shirt. I like the sculpting of the shirt and how you don't have that, you know, that Dean Ambrose tank top mold, man. I mean, it just looks really good right here. Very clean, black all the way around. And it is plain Jane you know, but the sculpt work is nice, the musculature is nice, the hair falls nicely. It's a pretty nice Jeff Hardy figure, all things considered. You have the hands in there with the white belt, which I really like, and then on the back, you do get the towel attached, which I really like as well, and it doesn't pour out really easy. Like, it's flimsy, but I think this operates very nicely. I don't think you're gonna really find it annoying. It's not falling out on you and stuff like that, which I really like, and say what you will about certain things. I, I don't know if this is removable. I'm not gonna remove it. I don't think it is, but it fits nicely, but this is my one of my only gripes about the figure in general is the just thickness of these legs. I talked about it in the Unmatched Series 9 Jeff Hardy figure review that I didn't care for that, and we're seeing the same leg mold. I don't think they're going to change it, but they're very thick legs, very, very thick legs. And then you do have the shoes down here, which they're not really the kick pad mold. They're kind of like a boot mold or sneaker mold, and then they just painted them differently how his boots usually look, you know, with all the straps and stuff. They just painted them on there. So figure low-key reminds me of like a Jax figure or something. But then we have the Matt Hardy figure, and very similar, you're getting the exact same formula outside of the head sculpt. Obviously, the head sculpts are different, but the torsos are different. The arm deco and, you know, the belt deco. There's different deco. I mean, this is kind of just a repaint of the same figure, essentially. And these figures are from March 2022, so it's taken about, like, two years to see these figures come to full fruition from the time they were debuted. But the head sculpt does look nice. I like these, like, sunrises or, like, sun sort of flares going on on the shirt. I do like the, you know, he wears those tight-fitted shirts, and I think they look really good here in figure form. I really wish Mattel would take a step like this and do something similar to this. I just think it would be very nice to see, but really like the sculpt work. Again, it is the same exact molds as the Jeff Hardy. You're just getting different colors, like a black belt instead of a white belt. No towel in there, which is a good detail to have. And then it's the same leg mold, and then he does have the same shoe mold in black instead of the, you know, white painted on the top. But I mean, you're getting all the same molds, but it is certainly different. And then, of course, for your articulation, you're going to get the same exact deal out of both guys for the most part. He can look down pretty decent and not up because of the hair flap, but the ab crunch I found is not the best if you if you lean too far forward you can get kind of a bend right there but then if you push it too much further it will pop off but the ab crunch yeah it's not the best ab crunch of all time but everything else is pretty damn good you get the shoulders above 90 the rotation bicep swivel double jointed arms which are good the wrists do hinge up and down and rotate which is good and then you do get a really good kick forward for your twist of fates and things and then you also get a bend out so this is something that i would love to see from mattel obviously is to be able to do a 90 degree kick and you can also do a damn leg drop. Look at that leg drop right there. That's a great leg drop right there. Just bam right there. Just drop it right on there. And then you get the upper thigh cut. A really good double jointed knee as well. I, I don't know. These guys, as big as they are and the scaling issues that I have with these guys, which we'll get into in just a moment, I really like to pose these around. They remind me a lot of like a deluxe aggression jacks figure, which gives me really fun. I don't know. It's just very fun to pose around. I don't, I don't really know how to say it, but he also has shin cut, which is just immaculate. So you get thigh and shin cut, which I just love so much. And then the feet do go down and up. You get a small ankle pivot right there, and you can move these pretty decently. I really like the way both of these feel, and they pretty much have the exact same articulation because they are, again, the exact same formula. But I think on Matt Hardy's head scope, you can look down a little bit more because he doesn't have the middle hair. And then he can look up slightly because he doesn't have the hair in the middle. So that's really your only differences there. But damn, these figures are fun, man. I, I don't know. There's just something about them that's charming and feel really good. Your just issues that you're going to have with these guys, I think, is going to be your scaling, which we'll get into in just a moment. But let's bring in some other other AEW Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy figures so you can kind of see the comparisons between the two. So for your Hardy Boy figure comparisons, you will, guys will see sort of your non-Hardy Boys, Hardy Boys, I guess you could say, but the scaling is really it. Now, this figure was big for it back in the day. Now you throw this figure in there, and this one's even bigger than that one, and you could probably do like a torso swap between the two if you wanted to just to see it. You know what? Let's just do it just for the just for the shishes and gigs. You know, pop that off there, and then pop this off right here. Pop this on there just to see. You know what I'm saying? Just see what it looks like. 
look, man. You never know. You never know. And these legs probably would make it more scalable, maybe. Yeah, like, see how much shorter that is? But these pants weren't really baggy enough when they made the mat already. But then if you put that on there, there you go. I mean, you could make a shirtless mat with the black pants if you wanted to. But I don't know. That's kind of a cool swap right there to do. If you wanted to do something like that. Putting this back up here. And then one thing I kind of wanted to do was see with this head skull. And you could put this necklace on here, dude. Look at that. You could pop that off and then you could put the necklace. Is that from the unmatched figure? Or did I get a Mattel one? I can't remember. Did I pull that off a Mattel figure? I don't know. Anyway, look at this. Put the unmatched head sculpt on there. And look at that. You have a nice little Jeff fix up. Not bad, man. And then you could even do like some freaking figure photography. Where you have him dress like this. And then you can have him holding up like a marker or some paint to his face in a mirror. And then it's like... Like he's trying to get ready for his match. I don't know, kind of a cool deal there. But I really, dude, this figure's badass. I really enjoy these figures. Again, they're, you know, they, they're too big and everything, but damn, they're fun. And then for the most comparable Mattel, Matt Hardy, and Jeff Hardy figures I have really in my collection, you do have the Unrivaled 16 in the middle, which obviously tower over the Mattel figures. We have the Ringside Exclusive Hardy Boys 2-pack. I have a custom Team Extreme Matt Hardy I had made years ago. I just put the Matt Hardy head sculpt from one of these 2-packs on there. Then we have the Elite, I think, what, 57? Jeff Hardy figure, and then I just put a more modern head sculpt on there from one of the basics that kind of matches the same face paint, and then I do have the Elite 71 Jeff Hardy with the black and white face paint on there that kind of ties in. It's very, I mean, they're similar, but I would prefer this face paint, but you can just kind of tell the differences and the issues that we face here, but these legs are certainly more articulatable than these down here and all those things, but I don't know, man. I like these figures a lot. But I think that pretty much wraps up our AEW Unrivaled 16 Hardy Boys action figure review, Jeff Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, man. I really like these figures in a lot of ways, man. I pretty much, I guess I'll run through what I really like. I really like the head sculpts on Jeff particularly. Obviously, my issues, I'll get into that in just a second. I'm sorry, my brain, like, I go, it's like a ping pong ball, man. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's ADHD. I don't know what it is, but that's just kind of how my brain operates. I'm like, I have a thought and then I'm like, oh, I got to cut to this thought real quick and then I'll come back. But I really like the Jeff Hardy head sculpts a lot. I really like the attire they went with. I know it's not as colorful as people may like. It's not, you know, your typical Jeff Hardy figure, but I think this is a really sweet gear. I like this gear. I like the face paint a lot. I think it looks good. I'll start off with Jeff and then I'll cut over to Matt, but I like the gear. I like the towel on the back. I really like everything aesthetically. I think the thing that I don't like is the scaling. We've talked about the scaling issue. I think that they were really at home when they were in perfect scale with Mattel and everything they have going on because I think that's really your crossover market you want to capitalize on. And not that they won't sell figures if they keep the scaling the same way, but I just think it really, really helps your line when they're all scaling together. I just don't understand why Jeff Hardy is so damn big or this figure is so damn big like you know the Edge figure is so damn big and then you get Kenny Omega and he pretty much scales perfectly with Mattel I just don't like that I think Darby Allen scales really well I think Sting's figures and one thing I think it is is because they made those guys really early on and at the beginning they were scaled with WWE and Mattel and then they kind of ventured off the more characters they made they got out of scale and then they're back in scale and they have these weird things crossing over and I think that's really where it happened and it was probably around like unrivaled eh, I'd probably say like unmatched series like five six is kind of when the scale started tipping too big and I think that I think that's the case I'm just kind of laying it out there but uh, yeah that'd probably be my biggest issue is just scaling wise I think the figures do look good for what they are and I think the legs are a bit bulky but they feel really good in hand they pose around well they're fun figures to shoot I, I really enjoy the figures overall if you're a feeling hand type guy if you are a feeling hand type woman or lady you may you may enjoy these figures just because they do pose around really well so there is that but in terms of scaling and just your different AEW action figure issues that we've seen over the last couple years, then yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to have some, some of those similar problems in terms of scale and, you know, th maybe some things that way. But I really like these. I think that these are probably the best two figures in the set what, from what I've seen online and some different people reviewing these figures and talking about them. I think these are really nice. They shot well. They were very fun to shoot with. But again, I'm a big Hardy Boys fan, so I enjoy these. I'm really excited for the Amazon 2-pack of the Hardys that's coming soon as well. That should be a really fun one. But that is pretty much going to wrap up the video, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on these figures down below. Below. Of course, use code MD Toys to save yourselves 10% at Ringside Collectibles. And also, we have a Whatnot show coming on Sunday, man. Do not miss it. It's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of stuff up for sale. Mystery items, the whole nine, man. It should be really fun. We're going to get in here and, of course, have a really fun stream on Whatnot. So definitely come by, man. It should be a lot of fun. And I would greatly appreciate you guys coming by. Click the link in the description below. Get the free $15 credit. All you have to do is add a payment method and a legitimate address to affirm it. And then I do think that it gives you the $15 credit. And then you can add, like, your own money to that as well. 
well. So I think that's how it works over there. So you guys should get in on that. It's a lot of fun. But before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. You guys are such a blessing. I appreciate you guys so very much. You guys are absolutely incredible. We also added a third child to my family recently. And, you know, supporting on Patreon and on the channel and everything always helps out a lot. And I appreciate all of you guys. You guys are incredible. But that is pretty much going to wrap up the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me all your thoughts down in the comment section below. I, of course, love interacting with you guys down there. But I'm getting out, man. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>